right, welcome to another episode of Architect Tomorrow. I'm really pleased to be continuing the series of reviewing the year that's just been and looking forward to the future and looking at what will come in 2024. Um, a comedy of errors today, so I had <laughs> planned for a couple of other people to be here, various people have been unwell and, and, and said no, and unfortunately Tom, we were going to be at Solace like we were last time, but unfortunately Tom's had a bit of a, a household emergency to deal with, so hopefully Tom, that's all going okay by the time this recording kind of comes out. But um, anyway, really pleased to be uh, joined again by Penny, I think. Hi Ollie, thank you, <laughs> yes, sorry to be the last woman standing for today's <laughs> podcast, I made it. <laughs> No, thank you for that. And there was a point where I was like, mm, I'm not sure this is going to happen <laughs> because then I forgot my pass for this building and various catalogue of errors. Anyway, I won't bore, we won't bore everyone with that. It's great for you to be here because I think the last time you were on, it was COVID and we're all on Zoom. Yeah. We had some really interesting conversations, I think, about hybrid working and stuff yeah. like that, didn't we? Well, we're not talking about that as much as we were. It's definitely still of a, of a sort of real challenge, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't know anybody that seems to have that nailed any no. company any person it's and it's funny because like today it's like oh we've got to go back to in person again I'm working at remote a lot so it's like right trains and train strikes are train strikes happening today or not all the all the fun of physical transport and logistics and building passes and all that sort of good stuff but but Penny since we last spoke you've um you've changed roles haven't you so give us a bit of an update on yeah. that front so I think when we met before it was probably just as I was joining IBM right. during COVID, and now I've just left and yeah. I've joined a small Salesforce consultancy in Ardua, okay. and they are um, they are really growing out of that post COVID. So people can work from anywhere. There's a work from anywhere in the world policy, yeah. and I am now effectively uh, the London office. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, so my job will be to be the person that spends more time with Salesforce and and is able to do the in person work here right. in London. Um, but yeah, it's a, a really great opportunity to to kind of help build something ground up there. Terrific business because they have a core enterprise customer. So unlike a lot of startups, they've actually had the legs really to be able to invest and to right. get some some more senior, more seasoned people in. So nice. yeah, really awesome. really nice team. Hopefully slightly amusingly, given how much we were talking about generative AI on the last one of these, I decided to kind of have a virtual additional panellist, which is a good thing, given, given I, I, I lost a couple of panellists in the run-up to setting this up. For those that are regular listeners, will hear me kind of talking about Claude quite a lot, Claude.ai by Anthropic. I decided to put the transcript for uh, the last episode into, in, into it, and it's, it's given us some interesting summaries. And I also have asked it about 2024, and we'll come on to that in the next, in the next episode. But so yes, we will we will potentially dip into moments where we where we uh, we look at what Claude has kind of given us as views. Has it got it right? Has it hallucinated mm. something, or has it actually come up with something quite quite you know uh, grounded? So um, well, yeah. And if he's right and we're wrong next year, Ollie, that's going to be the really bad news. You're going to have to just quit the podcast and let will <laughs> take over. Well, <laughs> it's interesting you should say that because I think the next treat that just a sneak peek for perhaps next episode is. Video, you know, a video uh, generated by AI seems to be where the models are going now. So actually, yeah, next episode, will I just get Claude and the video models just to create an entire episode? <laughs> we don't even have to. We don't have to, even have to get on the tube on the train. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there's my there's my wild prediction for the next the ne- next time round. Let's kick off Penny with a bit of your sort of thoughts, I suppose, on this year. Right, it's been it's been another rocky one, I suppose. Yeah. Unfortunately, we spoke last year actually about. Um, a, a, a horrible situation with a conflict in Europe that we never would have imagined and unfortunately that is still ongoing and we have another one in, in the Middle Eastern conflict which is obviously very sensitive and very difficult and I don't, I, I'm certainly not in a position to talk about it because it's so complicated and I'm generally leaving that to other people that you know, know what's mm, going on but 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 equally, you know that that that's you know that's in a lot of people's minds. You know, human rights, all that sort of horrible, horrible stuff that's sort of going on, uh, the nature of conflicts. But clearly, there's been lots of other stuff going on in the technology business world this year. But what's I suppose stood out to you has been um, sort of notable this year. Um, well, uh, I uh, it's AI bingo, isn't mm-hmm. it? Because um, I think that was we expected there to be some news about AI this year, but I actually thought. Um, that 2023 was going to be the year about data. Okay. I thought it was, especially in the Salesforce ecosystem, the launch mm-hmm. of Genie that's now Data Cloud, right. data and, and what we're doing about data, 
that I thought was going to be everything this year. I thought that's where all the dollars were going to be going, where all the time, the expertise was going to be. And particularly in the space where I work, that would be around marketing cloud, around the data cloud, and around how all of that connects yeah. and how we are. We've been talking for decades about single source of truth, mm -hmm. but I really thought that this year that was going to be the thing. And right. there's been a lot about that, but it's just been completely swept aside by the conversation around AI. Yeah, and I, and I guess what has supposed to be masked that is that the internet data source that's powering generative AI to kind of create generic output is perhaps distracting people from the fact they still need to sort their own data. And we'll yeah. perhaps come on to whether 2024 is the year that the penny drops. Sorry, mm. to, that must be a bit of a pun there on your name. Um, but, you know, is, is it when businesses realise that, yeah, this stuff, you can't avoid the fundamentals, which is your data needs to be in a good place. Otherwise, it's yeah. just going to hallucinate stuff based off the internet, which yeah, exactly. is, is a mixed content source. But, yeah, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, you know, an AI can write, in a customer scenario, the AI can write a great email, it can make a lot of sense, it can use a lot of great data points, but if they're still sending that five times to somebody, yeah. is how how great is that? Yeah, really? actually, if you're just sending dumb email campaigns out, is that really a smart use of, of this, or could you yeah. use more context and, and, and pop up in other channels and things? Like, yeah, that, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And what about um, a kind of a highlight or a, a low light maybe of, of, of this year? Um, I think you've already touched on the low lights, right. which is um, the the war yeah. and yeah. you know the ongoing war in Ukraine, the the war in Israel, and I think that while those are clearly kind of society's big challenges, mm. and they do impact us as people, you know that in certainly in the Salesforce ecosystem, there's a real great hub of innovation happening out of Israel, and so there are people I've worked mm -hmm. with there for for many years, and. Yeah. And that you can't escape the human side of those challenges, but I think that all speaks to a business atmosphere of extreme caution. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know about you, but for for everywhere I've worked, there's a lot of businesses that are really enthusiastic about big investments, big transformation programs, but many many times it's about wow, you know, we might just wait and see a little bit longer. And I think that we know that. There's the American election coming yeah. up. We know we're going to have an election yeah. and very yeah. likely to get a different shade of government. Yeah. And so I think for us as individuals as well as um, businesses, those are reasons for caution. Right yeah, now. I was going to say they're sort of sowing the seeds of doubt, I suppose, aren't they? That they're making yeah. pause and go, do I need to do this now or do I kick the can down the road? And that's certainly been true to an extent of, you know, of, of my world as well, for sure. Like the uh, things being put on hold or perhaps deferred, I think is a jet. And everyone I pretty much speak to actually in on the supplier side, I suppose, is feeling a similar sort of pain, I think, is is that deferral. And I guess that aligns with what was said in the last the, the, the video we did about, about predictions for this year, which was the year of constraints. Like, mm -hmm. there would be sort of challenges sort of set on, uh, you know, kind of budgets, headcount, hiring, um, new resources. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think we're kind of playing catch-up on a number of fronts, I guess. Yeah, I think what's slightly at odds about that is we know that we're having a bit of an economic rebound. So mm. actually, I think that the money is there, okay. the business is there, it just isn't quite coming through right. into those transformational projects. Yeah, and transformational hires and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Um, and maybe that's just a natural kind of curve. Maybe those things just are running behind. And, mm -hmm. But I think with so much change, also businesses are wanting to see if that bounce back is sustained. Um, yeah. You know, when you look at hiring, that post-COVID sort of bubble of extreme hiring, with you know, certainly in, in my ecosystem, mm -hmm. that's we've seen, you know, Salesforce let people go. A lot has has happened that way in in the industry over the last year or so. Because they were one of the earliest ones, weren't they, to kind of make quite a few people, yeah, I mean, you know, the tech sector is still, I suppose, experiencing that sort of shift in supply and demand of, of talent. Um, yeah. And But they recently announced that they pretty much want to hire the same number back again, <laughs> right. with a focus on AI-orientated okay. roles, so right. not literally the same no. people, but it's... Um, yeah, it's kind of self-correcting in that yeah. sense. And that actually then speaks to one of the things that I think is a real positive this year, okay. which is a kind of um, coming of age in the workplace for us of um, Gen Zers. Okay. 
And so, as we've talked about before, I've done quite a lot of work with apprenticeship programmes, with early professionals, and seeing those folks kind of hitting their early to middle 20s now, Mm -hmm. rather than just being new entrants to the workforce, that, I think, is pretty exciting and transformative. You know, they're they're just really open about their AI. I think they're going to have the skills to operate that much better than us. They're Mm going to come naturally to them. They are much more open-minded, diverse. They don't know anything be, except diversity. So I guess it's really it's it, group of people. If you look back to, because we're a sort of similar age, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And if you look at our kind of early career, that, that was when the internet was just sort of maturing and becoming the like, like early noughties. And I guess what what the benefit of that was, we saw the analog world and we saw the world becoming more and more digital and transformed by inter- internet technologies. I wonder if the same is true now of this current generation, is they would have seen the world manual and they'll mm. see the world being heavily augmented and automated. And will that be quite a, a, a useful set of skills to have seen the world before and the world as it can, as it can be? So almost AI native, like, yeah. like we were kind of internet native at the time. Is that yeah. a similar sort of you know transitional way for the workforce? That could be yeah, interesting. I hope so. I hope yeah. so. And I think that they will, like we even were about things like social media, I'm really hesitant about social media these days. Okay. I'm much more sceptical. Mm-hmm. Whereas I was a real early adopter of Facebook. You know, mm. I was a real early user of that. And um, and that's because I was working with a lot of people who were, you know, five, eight years younger than me who got into it at uni. I was then their boss in their first job. So then I got into Facebook really early. Now I rarely even look at the thing. But then I was... And I think for these Gen Zers. As they've, when they were children, there weren't iPads, they weren't watching the phones at every meal yeah. they were, uh, but now they are true digital natives, and I, and I think that does equip them really well for the next phase of things. I think they're ready for right. the, the next phase right. too. So, yeah. Cool, nice. So here's where we turn to our other virtual panelists, right? And so. Um, I asked, I asked Claude, as I said in the introduction, to kind of summarise what, 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 what uh, Tom, uh, Emma, uh, Sally and myself talked about last time. And so let's just, let, uh, an example of how powerful this technology is, is I fed this, I say, fed the transcript in and it's given me, what, about six bullet points here that summarise the conversation. So we talked a lot about large language models like GPT-3, at the time it was still GPT-3, 3.5, I think it was kind of, it was in the offing, certainly GPT-4 wasn't, wasn't around. Um, and the need to address issues around intellectual property, what it's going to mean for education, you know, perhaps plagiarism, all that sort of mm. stuff. But also, you know, uh, interesting sort of moments where my daughter, for example, was using it to learn how to code Python and, and be wowed by how a computer could also write code for itself and things like mm. that. So that was quite interesting. But also things like ethics, you know, and how, how ethical is some of the deployment of these technologies, the bias and all the privacy sort of side of things as well. So that, that, that was a large piece. And I think, you know, we clearly got that. Bang on, but that probably wasn't a hard prediction because there was so much, <laughs> so much of a tidal wave of that happening. And but I, but I, I guess... still think you get credit for that because nobody knew quite how it was going to take over the entire conversation. This but, it, but it did, but it did, but it did dominate, didn't it? Um, uh, and then I, I uh, clearly, this is a topic of mine. I mean, I guess AI and sustainability have become my two main topics. To be honest, that I've, I've been sort of getting deep in over the last year, and I was even about last year trying to weave the sustainability in, thread into the conversation and. So I, I kind of raise points around sort of sustainability and technology decision making, but there's a lack of concrete data and standardised approaches and metrics to truly measure impact. I still think to a degree that's true, but there's been quite a lot of development this year actually. Yeah. Um, really interesting things coming out of open source communities like the Green Software Foundation, the Green Web Foundation. There's a whole bunch of really interesting projects that are kicking off. So I think next year, and we'll obviously come on to talk about this next episode, I think we're going to see some quite cool projects and products become available in this oh, space. I hope so. I hope so because I feel like that's a space where the technology is actually in pretty good shape mm. and it's growing really well. But um, where organisations are is really the awareness. behind that. Yeah. 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 The ability to build an investment case, who the decision makers are. It's still a bit of a cul-de-sac in a lot of organisations. Yeah. Um, where it needs to be a part of every team and every leader. And it's, it's really difficult to get get time, get money, get attention, mm-hmm. you know, resolve the issues that you need to resolve to to actually do good, like meaningful good stuff. impact. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we'll definitely come on to that in the next episode. Um, but we also talked, I think particularly Tom sort of touched on the need to refocus on some technology basics like 
where are you with your open source software? I think that was off the back of things like log for shell yeah. still, where we had the massive sort of you know open source library that had major vulnerabilities in it. Data management was a, was a thing we mm. talked about. We hoped that it was going to be more about data management than getting wowed by algorithms, but you know, <laughs> hopefully there will be a course correction for that one soon. Um, and then, yeah, kind of so, so focusing on some of those foundational pieces rather than the hype that was still prevalent at the time around Metaverse and Web3, yeah. which has kind of died down somewhat. And I suspect that's possibly because of the FTX case, um, you know, the kind of fraud mm. sort of scandal. Uh, I also think sustainability concerns of blockchain and Bitcoin have also been raising yeah. their head, which is, you know, quite right. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, some of these things have, and I guess it's, it's gone through that hype cycle. It was the hype thing. AI has come along and, and largely displaced it as the sort of poster child for tech but innovation. That, exactly. I wonder, is AI, is AI blockchain or is AI social media? Wow. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> is yeah, it going to yeah. be in the way that social media has just become a, a, a thing, a segment in its own right, a part of the fabric of, of daily life? Whereas uh, in the early days of blockchain, we all thought it could change the world. Mm. and. And that just hasn't come to fruition. And for a couple of years, that was a big space for investment, for thought, for time. Uh, and it just hasn't yeah. happened. We've, we touched on this a little bit last time, so I, I will repeat, repeat too much. But we talked about the fact that AI has already had a very big winter, right? Mm. And this is possibly where it's, it's kind of, you know, um, the future is already, already here. It's just unevenly distributed. And <laughs> like you over predict the impact of things in the short term and under the long term mm -hmm. holds true, I think, for AI. Also, the other big difference for me is blockchain was, is, has always been the sort of thing where it's a real technology innovation that's just struggling to find the use case. Yeah. Whereas generative AI was adopted by 100 million people on, on ChatGPT within what? It was the most record-breaking sort of adoption cycle, was it? I think within a month yeah. or something. I may have got those figures slightly wrong. But people, it immediately sparked people's imagination from the sea level all the way down. And then that's the big difference for me. Blockchain is still quite a niche community of people that under, A, understand yeah, it, and B, understand what the yeah, business yeah. challenges are that can be solved with it. So yeah. that, for me, is the big difference. And the AI winter piece, I think, is... I think we are very much seeing an AI summer. Yeah. And I also think what we'll see is different models take the limelight. So we've had the year of LLM, maybe 2023 was the year of LLM. Mm. I think next year, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll maybe come to this the next episode, but I suspect other models will start to take centre stage and we'll perhaps see a, a hype cycle around models yeah, rather than AI Yeah, there's a couple general. I want to talk okay. about. But, um, cool. Yeah, I think that's maybe you've hit the nail on the head of that difference is that anybody that's seen a sci-fi movie or is familiar with Asimov or H.G. <laughs> yeah, Wells, yeah. They, they can uh, grasp yeah. the concepts around LLM and Open the pod bay doors you know, now. Yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah they, get, they get it yeah. instantly, yeah. whereas something like blockchain, like you said, it, it's, it's a data it's much technology, more it's more nitty-gritty. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's less, far less accessible. I'd say it's more like the Linux desktop. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like how everyone knows that technically the Linux desktop would be more efficient for want to use but sadly it's just a bit too techy and it's got a lot better I, I actually dabble with it a little bit but that's because I'm a geek and a tinkerer not not it's not you know generally there but um we may revisit that actually around the sustainability piece given Microsoft's um somewhat firm line it's drawing under the hardware or support on Windows 11 yeah. which is quite interesting and lots of devices in 2025 and you know, that's slightly outside of 2024 are going to no longer support, you know, mm. be no longer supported. So that's an interesting one that may push people down alternative routes. And we also talked about our predictions dead in an era of ever changing perma crisis. <laughs> that's um, a bit meta, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the reality is no. Some predictions, if you've got enough signal, you can make the prediction. I think that clearly there's a lot of other noise and things come out of left field. Um, so there's always going to be a degree of uncertainty. Um, yeah. yeah, I think maybe it's just human predictions may be dead because, you know, the AI technology is able to use far more data points yeah. and, and be far more accurate in its conclusions with potentially less bias, but I mean, bias is an interesting subject, isn't it? But, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Mm, so, so there's more. There's a bit. There's a bit more sub bullet points that Claude has gone. But rather than read those out, I'll just include them in the show notes for anyone that wants a quick recap of what we talked about um, last year. It kind of goes into. It also goes into sort of people and culture, and we've touched a little bit on that anyway. Like the great resignation that's affected the workplace. Um, yeah. So I think we've covered, we've nicely, neatly wrapped that up. Mm. So with that, um, that's a bit of a intro and a teaser for what we're going to come on to next. 
So do check out the, the next episode on uh, 2024 predictions. Now that, depending on how busy my Christmas period is, that may <laughs> land sometime in December. I suspect in reality the next episode will probably land in early January as it be a nice sort of thing for you to kind of create your resolution, new resolution, yeah. new technology resolutions. I like this because it's like, watch this next episode for a bit of inspiration for what are the things you might want to look out for next year. Exactly, what we can all learn about during, mm-hmm. you know, planning our own learning and development for the year. Yeah, really yeah. great. Yeah, awesome. So watch this, yeah, keep an eye on the channel for the next episode.